Okay. Hello, everyone. This is John Hamm with Alliance Solutions Group, and we're going to take hopefully the next 10 minutes or so and give you a high-level overview of the Timberline estimating system. Normally, we'd spend the better part of an hour showing you the software, so we are going to be operating in a pretty quick mode here. So uh, just so everyone understands, uh, our software program is available and is sold to a wide variety of contractors, uh, general contractors, home builders, plumbers, electricians, uh, the list goes on and on. I even have a shipbuilder who uses it. And our software is driven based off of a database that defines what type of estimating you're going to do. Uh, obviously, in the limited time we have today, we're going to use a general contractor's database to just show you the core of how the system operates. And just keep in mind that if you're not a general contractor, uh, don't be distracted by this because there's a lot more to the product than we're going to show today, but wanted you to get a look and feel of the system. So we'll start by generating a new estimate. And uh, uh, it's going to ask me for the name of that estimate. I'm just going to call it New Job uh, 400. And I simply say OK. The system will quickly open up a information screen for me to tell the system about some key things, maybe what day the bid is due, who the estimator is. Um, if we're wanting to, we can use labor and rate tables for different locations in the country that we operate in. Uh, we may want to put in the size of the job. Um, and let's say we want to say square feet here. And uh, lots of other information. Again, we're not going to drive through all of this today. I'm going to say OK. The system's going to generate an estimate for me to start populating. Keep in mind that the columns as we start moving through here are all user defined. We can add more information, delete information. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. So in our structure, we start with uh, items. And an item is anything we need to price in an estimate. And uh, so we have tables of items out here. And we come into the table, and we may look at forms. We may look at uh, rebar. We may look at concrete. And let's say if we're looking at uh, a concrete slab on grade, we may have different types of concrete. We are sitting here looking at this, and we can calculate not only labor prices and material prices and equipment prices. We can do all of those simultaneously on a given item. So I'm going to start right here with the next level up, which is called an assembly. An assembly is a group of logically related items. And I'm going to simply come through, again, this list of general construction assemblies. This is actually a group. I'm going to come into the concrete group. And I'm going to use slab on grade, because lots of people use that. Notice there are three examples, actually four here. Uh, simple, moderate, and complex. And I want you to see how simple or sophisticated a given assembly can be. So I'm going to pick the simple one at this point. I'm going to say uh, we've got a 40-foot uh, by 50-foot by 6-inch slab. I key information in here, and it generates quantities of items for me. Again, uh, if you have a bigger screen, you can display more information. Uh, we can change the resolution on the screens if you like. But I have listed the following items as items that I needed to calculate quantities on. So I created these items, grouped them together into an assembly, answered some common questions, and it calculates a quantity for each one of these. And that is simply done by a formula that is associated with each one of these. And since we can use these variables uh, repetitively in, the same, in different formulas, we calculate all the quantities at the same time. If we're so inclined, we can do things like assign locations to items we take off. And then later, we'll be able to sort estimates based on that. I'm going to fill down right there. And I send this information into my spreadsheet. And instantly, we see that it starts building the spreadsheet. So I'm going to do a couple of more takeoffs here real quickly. I'm going to pick the moderate slab. Notice mostly the same items we're calculating. But guess what? We've got a little bit different set of questions coming at us. How much concrete do I need? And we'll leave that at six inches. But now I get questions about gravel and sand. Since we're in Florida, we'll say we have plenty of sand already. Notice we get specification questions. 
what type of wire mesh are we going to use. I'm going to leave this at the 6 by 6 10 10 and whether or not we want to order it sheets or rolls. If we order it sheets, we get different production rates and different costing associated with it. The uh, vapor barrier coat, again, we're going to leave this at moist stop. Now we get a question about what strength concrete in this particular database we can run from 3,000 PSI to 7,000 PSI in 500 PSI increments, and what kind, colored, regular fiber mesh, and of course, what whether we want to calculate forming to go along with it at this point, which at this point I'm going to say no. And we've calculated quantities. I'm going to just say building B. You don't have to assign locations, but this will help me in showing the software or some of the features of the software a little later. And uh, we'll accept that. And just want to show you one more assembly takeoff. Notice it's asking me in square feet. Uh, I could use an on-screen takeoff program to digitize electronic plans, or I could use a real digitizer and digitize paper plans to come up with an area. Let's make this uh, uh, 25,000 square feet. And notice a lot of the same questions, but now I get questions about whether we're going to use any edge forms. And based on how I answer the question, it triggers additional questions to show up in the list. So how many lineal feet of form do we need? And we get down here and we'll ask us what kind of edge form we're using right here. And let's, let's say it's going to be a 2 by 2 square edge. Again, the rest of it we can leave the same, calculate our quantities, assign building C, and we'll bring this down and fill that. And we've done three takeoffs in a matter of seconds, and that information has now flowed through into our spreadsheet. Okay, Very quickly, I can grab items one at a time off of a list, so if I wanted to say I need some temporary fence and some job photos and uh, final cleanup. I can just select those off the list. I can calculate the number of feet of fence I need. Yeah, probably not 5,600. Let's make that something like, uh, let's make it 1,200. And one set of photos and one final cleanup. And again, this information then flows into my spreadsheet. We can also do drag and drops. Okay, so I can do quick takeoffs. I can search by any name. I can type in the word concrete. Every item with the word concrete shows up in my list. And of course, we can always add one-time items. And let's say we pick a spot where we want that to go. This is unique, not in my database, but I need to add, add it. So we're going to do a marble foyer. And we need 500 feet of it. And uh, it's going to make me put in square footage here or whatever. Some type of number. So we'll just say square foot. And I'm going to do some labor material calculations. And the system comes up and says, OK, what are we going to do here? And uh, I'm going to say, well, I need to convert this. So we're going to say that we need 10 square feet per hour for the labor. And my labor price is $20 an hour. And uh, we want to put a 5% waste factor in. So we're going to order 525 feet. And we're going to pay $25 a square foot for our materials. We may want to put notes in about where we selected that. Simply press Save. And that information flows into my spreadsheet. You'll see it listed right there. Now, now that I've built this spreadsheet with pricing in it, we can look and see all the columns across the top. And we'll see totals. We can lock columns in place, as you would expect any good spreadsheet, so that we can see what we have out there. We can go through and very quickly compress or combine information. If we look under View, we can collapse the information here to show us details and summary information. We can break this back out any way we want to see it. And of course, at any point, we can hit one button. And if I put this on the right screen, you will see the totals that go along with this estimate. Uh, as you might guess, we do have the capability of putting different screens of information up in different places, so I don't have to have everything on one screen. And we're looking here, and we see these add-ons. And I can simply come through at this point and select the various components I want and add them right here. And we've got a bottom line for our uh, estimate right here. And uh, I don't need a material discount. We don't get any of those these days. And uh, I may want to bump my fee up. So we're 
constantly seeing the bottom line, which also displays on the screen right here whether or not we're displaying this window. I want to go ahead and save those changes and close the window. And we have uh, got ourselves an estimate here that we can continue to do takeoff on, um, manipulate the data, look at how the screens are laid out. If I wanted to look at uh, only subcontractors prices, I can shorten the list down to look only at those. If I want to, I can come back and come back to my standard view and look at all kinds of information there. So again, very quick overview, 50,000 foot. Uh, we'd like to uh, show you the software in a little bit more detail. If you've got any additional questions, feel free to contact our office, uh, and information will display about that in just a minute. Thank you very much. Have a great day.